I'm Sophia Louisa Lee. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of So Zoom In. Please hit like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. I love bringing you original content with people who are in the creative flow. Ignacio. Sophia, nice to meet you. Ignacio. Thank you so much for joining me. And David's just coming on right now, too. Hi. Hi, fellas. This is James. How are you? This is Sophia. Hi, Sophia, great to meet you. Uh, my name is James Rafano. So I'm one of the producers of A Good Cop. Um, first of all, congratulations, everyone. I mean, I saw the show last week. Stop, Bravo. Stop. Every day. I, I know you guys are actors and you guys look gorgeous. And David, you did a great job casting all around. No it all looks right. like Ignacio is ready in the car. He's ready to go. Yeah. He's ready to run. No, I'm, 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 I'm in the car. I'm in the car. <laughs> right, of course. All right, so you can look at Cliff when he jumps in. So first of all, David, I'm so proud of you. Congratulations for, you know, having an idea, pitching it and making it come to life. Bravo, that is, you are living the dream, my friend. And to really give an opportunity to so many people to be a part of it. And we um, have a few people with us today that are part of the cast and we have the showrunner and a producer. And I believe Cliff, you just came in right now. Hi Cliff, how you doing? Hi. Um, hey Cliff. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. David, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you so you can do a quick intro of everyone and who they are in relation to your show. Is that okay? Sure. Um, so I'm David Chai. I'm the showrunner, writer, director. Um, and next to me is James Rofanos. Uh, James is the, one of the producers of the show and he was um, critical in running the set uh, in terms of um, contracts and in terms of location managing scouting um also just um yeah general dealing with the budgets and and things like that then we have ignacio um matanaya i hope i spelled matinia uh, matinia we've known each other for so long you <laughs> can't even get that right uh yeah so. matinia got three, uh, three main leads here so ignacio and then we have taylor curran and we have cliff labrudo and they play three different police officers in the TV series. Well, I saw the first episode, which aired, which premiered last week, and I loved it. I thought it was great. And it airs again today um, in New York. It's at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, right? I say that. And then I know here in Los Angeles, it's at 4.30. But it will be on demand starting next week, correct? Right. So watch it anytime. All right. Um, what I love about the show is that you have different stories going on, but they all see, they're all very cohesive. Um, it, okay. Ignacio, you, you are the, <laughs> I hate to say this, but you're the eye candy for young ladies and old ladies too. <laughs> so you are nice to watch and Taylor, you know, you are you know beautiful and powerful in your character. And you, I really like your character too, Clifford. You kind of like, you know, you're you know, nice and gritty and I love that. Um, you, I would love for each one of you to like say a little something about your character and what you feel you bring to it and what you like to see come out of it, if that's okay. Um, you had Clifford, Taylor, who would like to go first? Well, ladies first. Okay. <laughs> I go first? Yes, okay. you go first. Um, thank you. Yeah, um, I, I, I actually was just talking to Ignacio about this the other day. He and I have known each other for years we worked together on a really small short sort of serendipitously four years ago and kind of paths brought us back to working together which was pretty miraculous um but I was talking to him about all the characters and I and I feel like the characters are when you take an acting class they talk about how your character leads the head the heart or the will and I feel like our three characters each lead with one of those things and I feel like Elizabeth feels like the heart, like the empathy, the leading with her, um, her love of others and like deep love and respect for herself, wanting to make things better, wanting to make things right, uh, really believing in, in justice and, and equity and taking care of people. She, she is kind of fighting herself as she joins the force because she's being inundated with so much, uh, contradictory messaging about what it means to be a police officer right now. And she just wants to figure out what it means for her. Uh, she, she witnesses someone who saves her and it changes her and, and she learns what policing could be, what it could look like. And she wants to be the face of policing that 
is fair, equitable, and 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 uh, kind towards everyone. So I love her. I I am obsessed with her. I think she is so just in her core good. I really believe in her. I would just I I just love watching everywhere she goes. So I'd love to see her like kind of rip it, like really like stand up with the the big guys and and just have a like. I want to see her really stepping into her confidence and her strength because she has so much of it. And, and it's, it's really incredible when you see her walk into that. Uh, yeah. I'm obsessed with her. I think she's the best. So I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> I love you, her. You've already shot the season's 10, se- 10 episodes, right? Right, David? Yeah. Right. All right. So, so you already know what happens to your character, right? Yes. So far. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All right, so I, just from the first episode, I see her with a lot of, a lot of strength um and I, I see her really going for it so david i i know you've written great characters all around so it's, it's just really exciting to see them brought to life so that's really cool and i and i love how you deal with your quote boyfriend in the first episode too i, I, <laughs> I like that. a lot of a lot of people who who are very invested in elizabeth and patrick and feel very strongly about where they should go and i've had a lot of people very excited about that relationship for better or for worse so it's really cool to see people engaged with that yeah he's the best rosario is amazing Oh, that's very cool. Now, um, Clifford, how about you? How do you feel about your character and where, where would you like to see him going? And you, thank you so much, Taylor. I appreciate that. Oh, oh right, no problem. Really that to you. <laughs> well, my character is basically a tough, uh, seasoned, even killed professional. He loves his men. He loves his work. And his men uh, admire and respect him. And he lives for this admiration and respect. This is something um, essential to his life. Very, very important to him. Um, My character will stand up for any other cop because he really feels that the reputation of the police is is so important and and he will stand by anyone. He's really not so fond of politicians, though. (laughs) Politicians are really, he has no respect for them because they came up in the ranks through political means. He feels that he's in his position through merit alone. And he despises, uh, actually, you know, uh, anybody who, who, uh, who achieves a position from other anything other than merit. He's, he's very stern when necessary, but he loves to kid around with his fellow cops. He, he just, he really enjoys that. And they love him for it. It's something that's very important to them. So would you say that you're a very likable character or do you say that you have some deep, dark secrets that are yet to be exposed? <laughs> well, I, I, think it's, I think I'm a likable character. Um, I make I have I am forced in this show to make uh, a decision that will basically really uh, affect could affect my life uh, in a in a deep way. Uh, my uh, devotion is to my family, my wife and my daughter. And I have to make a decision that's going to basically put them into jeopardy. And this is something um, very, very hard for me to do. But I am willing to do it for the greater good in this show. So it's. uh, It sounds like the life of a cop. They are constantly putting their family in danger. Are they just by being a police officer? Right. I mean, would you, right. say, would you say this is pretty much true to life, the role you're playing? Oh, I think it is. I think it's absolutely true to life. Well, would you ever become a real police officer? I mean, if you have a chance to ever be an officer in real life, is that something you choose to do? Uh, or is it- I've had a lot of occupations in my life, but that's not one of them that I have really. Uh, I don't think I have time to do that. I, I've decided that I'm going to be an actor for the rest of my right. life. Right. <laughs> 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 See, as an actor, you can be anyone, right? <laughs> 
Oh, absolutely. And I've played police officers in the past and, and a lot of the parts that I've done. And, uh, and I enjoyed doing those parts more than I've done, I think, any other parts that I've performed in. That's great. Well, I definitely look forward to seeing you again today. All right. So we're going to come back to you. Ignacio, I want to jump over to you. You are an also a police officer. Um, first of all, you were, you know, I mean, you were all wonderful in the first episode. Um, would you like to go ahead and give a little intro about your character? Sure. So um, I play Officer Jalen Daniels. And in the television series, the fascinating thing is we show these three contrasting uh, point of views on policing, all based off of experience and life circumstance that led them to be in the positions that they're in. You know, you have Taylor's character, you have my characters and Cliff's. Um, and the interesting contrast that my character has from both of these two is that he plays the middle ground. He's the he's the character that has the option to um, split into a path that normal police officers don't, you know, in, in, in the next episode, I get a promotion um, that kind of gives me uh, an inside look onto the, uh, the, the, the things that most police officers otherwise aren't privy to um, things that a lot of people are biased against because they don't have the, uh, the objective point of view on. And so my character gets to go into this new space and, take on an understanding of what policing, government, um, politics, how all these things are entangled and how certain aspects of it may hinder the, uh, the system that, that we all live under today. Um, as Jalen goes through these things, his, uh, his, his point of view on what policing is, this guy who's the straight shooter, um, he's got a strong moral compass, his, his background is about doing the right thing, his integrity and everything that kind of comes into his sphere of influence, start to question the foundations for what he believes justice even is. So as the, um, as the series progresses, as the episodes go on, uh, Jalen gets to have this inner look on policing and the audience gets to follow him and kind of get this broad understanding of the good and the bad, what it means to be a good cop. And uh, we've had this question multiple times based off the, um, the, the title of the television show. It's a good cop. And the question is, are we telling the story of a bunch of good cops or a bunch? What is it? And I think the interesting thing about the title is that every character has this inner thought process, this monologue that whenever they're posed with an obstacle, I think they, they think about if they're being a good cop. Is this what a good cop would do? Am I a good cop? It's not it's not in like a, an objective looks. It's not a finite understanding that every cop is a good cop. It's a. Uh, it's the understanding that every cop struggles with making decisions because each cop is a human being and human beings aren't perfect, you know? <laughs> and, and I think as you watch the television series, you'll see that there are different types of people put in different positions of power and how the different dynamic between their behaviors affects their job and how people perceive them and how the world ultimately ends up. And I think that's a, uh, is that good enough? Well, that's great. Well, you know, David, you've, you've really written great characters and you, you, you have topics that are very topical right now. So, and you don't really dive into politics of it. You're really, it's, I like to say it's a very intelligent film. So you've written people or characters with brains, which I really like. And I, I really appreciate that too. So what was it like all of you working together in New York? You know, I, you know, behind the scenes, can we get any little behind the scenes info at, from the actors, what it was like? I have a broad general question. <laughs> Did you? Cliff, you want to you want to start with this one, Cliff? Uh, sure. Um, and behind the scenes, uh, we worked so well together. It was just uh, it was like a, a family. It was uh, we had such great camaraderie. It was uh, it was so enjoyable. I, I never felt so alive working in the show. It was it was something very very special. And David gave us so much room to play. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was very professional about that. And uh, yeah, uh, and I'll tell you that, uh, yeah, it's probably the greatest experience of my life. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, to, pick, my to piggyback off of what he said, David did give us a lot of creative liberties to explore the characters. So when we were in a scene, you know, we were given the opportunity to find the truth based off of the locations we were shooting at, the dynamic between the other actors, it was interesting because there was a lot of cast members that like came through our doors because it wasn't the three of us didn't just get to work with each other. Some of us more than others, 
But um, mm-hmm. we had David. How many how many cast members did we have in total that came through the uh, that came through the television show? One hundred and thirty. One hundred and thirty. Wow. There was 130 characters. That's outside of the uh, main cast, right? Uh, we had 130 characters that were like around the that got to engage with the main cast. So it was uh, it was an interesting dynamic of learning how everybody works with each other, how, what the process is behind other actors, um, troubleshooting, coming up with ways to make things that we that may not have worked on paper work in the situation that we were in. You know, I know there was a lot of times where Taylor and I were sitting together and trying to troubleshoot issues because maybe the location we had intended had switched, you know. Um, and now we were, instead of being in like a, a one place, we're in another, but we have to make this circumstance work within the context of the script, you know. So there was a lot of camaraderie, a lot of teamwork trying to figure out the best way to come up with uh, with a solution under the um, the uh, confines of the limitations that we were that we were put under. Well, okay. Well, and you guys as actors, you know, you pretty much adapt to whatever you need to, right? That's part of it. You have to. That's 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 what that's what art is, right? It's about it's about taking the circumstance and making the most out of it, or or making whatever it is better, or trying to make it better. Always having the the ultimate goal of. How can I make this work? How can I find more? And how can we just all do that together over and over and over again to make something that's interesting to watch and interesting to talk about and something that people will remember, you know? Come back, come, come back for part two, right? All right, yeah. so was there any situation that should have gone one way but did a complete 180 and went the other way? Um, I believe, oh yeah, the, uh, the, se- well, the season finale. <laughs> the okay. season finale we um yeah I, I, you don't want to give it away right <laughs> that's something i can't that's something i can't give away but you know come back to us after all 10 episodes air and we'll talk about it all right so david are you happy with the season finale you did go out, go out way better than you ever imagined or uh, well i wouldn't say there's anything that was a true 180 um there were different um takes on um how some of the characters might have responded to each other, and and he's referring to some situations where um, the situation uh, or the you can't don't tell them don't tell them don't tell them don't watch tell the show watch the show <laughs> locations uh, yeah we had to adapt to locations but um, yeah I mean pretty much um, with something of this scale um, you have to be very careful about changing um, key uh, points or character. Um, things that happen in the story because if you take some things out then things later don't make sense anymore so you have to be very careful about what changes so this is the type of show where it builds on on itself in every episode right yeah correct okay. yes it's a serial so the story very very much progresses and accelerates and takes you on unexpected twists and turns which is exciting i love it um I, I, I think you guys all did a really amazing job. Um, so going back to Taylor real quick, what was it like um, portraying a female police officer in, in a big city surrounded by all these men? I know, it, I know it's an acting role, but at the same time, it's, you know, I, I hear people say all kinds of different things. So what was, what was it like for you? It's kind of incredible. I so I'm a nanny again. That's part of what I, I do, and and I I nanny for a woman who is a detective, uh, and it's it was kind of an incredible moment of serendipity, finding this casting and going in. And me and David had already worked together, and and James, and it, we had such a great rapport with one another. I wasn't supposed to be in the city. I had just started working for this this family, uh, where the, the the mom is a detective, and and. Uh, it was pretty incredible to get to do this because I felt like I was getting a deeper look at the type of person she, it was this cyclical, uh, mutually gratifying, like we got a deeper look at one another in a really incredible way. I, I got to intimately know through a lot of research or videos or conversations with David or conversations with other people in the cast who were on the force and, you know, I got a, a much deeper understanding of what that landscape looks like. but because of my boss i i kind of understood it a little bit more what it means to be a woman within that landscape and i think pretty much any job that you that you have 
culturally right now, I think that there's a conversation about how are we treating women within this landscape? And I'm really glad that we're having that conversation. And, and I know a lot of women who feel scared to make choices, to be wrong or to fight what they, for what they believe in or, or disagree or, or they, they don't want to be anything but small and palatable and easy to spend time with. And we get to watch Elizabeth grapple with that as someone who I think is relatively charming, nice, easy to get along with. And then seeing the world as someone who immediately is seen as someone that you can't get along with, someone who she puts on, it's like, a, a you know, when she puts on the uniform, she feels like she's now a completely different person. And it's really incredible as a woman who is also in the, there's a lot of conversations right now about how we treat a lot of people within the film industry, be it crew workers uh, or strikes, you know, with IATSE, uh, but also women within the industry, representation within the industry. So it felt almost like an ode to itself, getting to be uh, a young woman on this set who was like, in honor of Elizabeth, I got to fight for her. I have to fight for what she would want. I'm, you know, and, and step into my strength as well. It taught me a lot about my worth within any workforce that I step into and the understanding that I've worked just as hard to be here, if not harder, and I deserve to have my voice heard just like she does, just like every woman does, just like you do. It, 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 it was pretty exceptional and empowering to me to feel like, okay, like we're doing this for better or for worse, we are fighting for what we believe in and we will be heard. And uh, it, it, it was honestly, again, that's why I love her so much. I think she's awesome. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and it gave me so much. It gave me so much confidence. It gave me so much security. It gave me a real drive to work so hard that if anyone you know, had any questions about any choices I was making, I'd be like, this, 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 this is why. Because Liz would, and I should, and so would my boss. And so, you know, it, it's, yeah, it was pretty incredible. There's no words, uh, you know, for how grateful I am to play her. That's so awesome. Uh, one, yeah. thing, like, one thing I really like about the show is I know past, gosh, almost, well, quite a long time now, um, there, there's been so much talk about defunding the police, you know, and it really was nice to see a show where we get to see that these police officers really are people and they really do want to make a difference. Um, and then, of course, you know, you have all your different side stories where it kind of dives into different things and I, I look forward to seeing seeing where it goes but um what was that like for you guys knowing that you're seeing in your face on set you know someone who's already against being a police officer um what what was that like did you feel like any part of you was like agreeing with them or were you like so even as a character when you're like creating this character and you you are that person how did that make you feel I mean and I, that kind of goes to all three of you um, since you are all, are all playing police officers and yet all the, I mean, in the show you have, you know, like this huge protest that, um, you know, and stuff happens. Um, so, but how does that make you guys feel? Where you're like as an individual, as opposed to like the group. Ignacio, why don't you start? Cause you've played, uh, you've just recently played sure. another police officer in a big thing. So I think you should take yeah. this one away. Sure. Um, I think the one thing that uh, objectively a lot of people understand about the world we live in is that the system is broken. The system is broken and that it's not contingent on the individual people that work. It's about the people in power, the people who are, who are sending off commands to be done in a certain way. Uh, the, the political game that people are playing, I think those are all things that kind of have an effect on how policing is looked at today, you know? Uh, I've learned a lot about policing. I, I, I grew up in New York. A lot of my friends are in the NYPD. One of my best friends is an MTA police officer. I just did a movie where I played a police officer in Virginia who deals with PTSD, alcoholism, and depression because of the stuff he deals with on the line of duty. Um, and so when you look at like the defund the police movement, there, I, there, is a, there, is, there is a gap that needs to be bridged between what's being understood and what the objective truth is and the subjective realities that these two polarizing uh, point of views live at, you know? Um, personally, as an actor, I'm sure Taylor and Cliff can attest to this. You look for the empathy within every character. It doesn't matter how evil they're portrayed in real life, how, how, uh, how you know, separated they are from 
the regular social atmosphere, you have to find the good in them. You have to find the empathy and the understanding. So you try to try to take in a well-rounded uh understanding of what they go through and you have to do your research you have to talk to people you have to kind of figure out what is wrong and we're not social heroes we're actors but our job is to try to bring a point of view to life as authentically as we can and the way we do that is by doing our homework and i think all of us have learned that there are sides to the defund the police movement the blue lives matter the black lives matter all these different facets that have to play and coincide in this world that we live in that are right and are wrong and i i personally can't take a a a one-dimensional stance on any of these things because taking that stance means you're not taking into consideration the context of the other factors that need to be taken into consideration so you can't give an answer saying whether you support or or don't support, you have to kind of go in it from a point of view of, I want to learn more so I can understand why these people feel this way. And I think that's what all of us did with these characters, at least trying to bring them to life on the show. Oh, well, you guys do a great job with that. That was beautifully said. So thank you. And and David, you've written shows where I feel, I mean, as the viewer myself, I found it to be a very intelligent show where no, I'm, I'm getting a different perspective from different characters. So that's very well done. And I'm really glad there's this kind of show out there where people can really see that there are differences and take into consideration someone else. And so you as the actors, you really bring that to life, you know, which I, I appreciate to see that as you know, a TV show as opposed to having something slanted and you know, shoved down your throat. <laughs> so that, that's great. How, um, how did that feel for you? Um, when you're play, portraying your role, it's, I mean, what do you what do you think? Uh, I um, I don't want to give away any of my political uh, motive. Of course not. <laughs> but uh, I agree with what Ignacio said. Uh, I think it's uh, when you're an actor, you have to really look at the uh, the motivations of the character and decide, uh, uh, you know, what. Um, what the what the justifications are for what you're doing and um and i i really um yeah i feel that uh i've come after doing this show uh, i have uh, developed uh actually more respect for the police uh i i can't say that um i, I don't want to say that i didn't have respect for the police before my brother-in-law is a policeman and or was a policeman and actually helped train me in, in the show and, and I have many friends who are policemen. Uh, so I, I, I do have respect for them, but uh, I've had experiences in my past with police also that have sort of slanted uh, my views before I started to do the show. So uh, I did feel that it became, it was an education for me to, to really, to do this and, and to really, uh, to learn more about what the reality of the police situation is. And I think that people watching this, whether they love the police or they hate the police, uh, will really enjoy the show. Yeah, I, I, it's a great balance, which is really nice. And what I love is you all commit to your roles. You're all very committed and all very believable, which I find very engaging. You know, and I wish I didn't have to see commercials. <laughs> um, but um, no, great job, really, um, David. So I have to ask: um, when you had an opportunity to pitch this. Um, how did you come up with an idea for the good cop or a good cop? Uh, well, the, the pitching process was actually very fast. Um, we had done a short film together with uh, Taylor, Karen, and um, uh, James. And, you know, the core five people that were involved in the production of that short film also did um, a good cop. But we did this short film together, and the network broadcast that short film and liked <clears throat> liked it, and they wanted to meet with us to see if we had any ideas for series. So um, I had written down a few different ideas, and um, one of them was about the protester to a police officer, and the other one was actually um, – I won't reveal that because that would spoil what's coming up. Next. So, <laughs> but uh, essentially, they like they like the two ideas, and that those two ideas got combined into a good cop. But I had, <clears throat> I had to turn around and take those two sentences and construct the characters, the Bible, 
um, the outlines, the world. And so I put together a 24 page Bible. Um, I, I built it around three main characters, which are these three here, and um, came up with the, um, the core storylines that would drive in how, how the storylines intersect. And then um, I took that back to the network and said, okay, here it is, here's the, um, here's the Bible. And the boss said, great, I haven't read it. Why don't you uh, pitch it to me? So I basically had 10 minutes to kind of describe all the themes and characters and the journeys of each character and the storylines. And, and then he was like, sounds good. I think uh, we should do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Wow. How often does that happen, right? It's like, wow, that's, that's pretty incredible. Um, so I was like, okay, what does it mean we should do it? Does it mean we should do like write a pilot, write scripts? What does it mean we should do it? He says, no, let's do it. Let's do the whole show and let's do the first season. I'm like, oh, wow, okay. And then the next question was, so when can you deliver this? <laughs> so I had to kind of go backwards and, okay, well, if we start shooting this in June, that means I really have to finish writing this by April, which means I got to do one episode every 10 days. Wow. And, and you did? I did, yeah. And, and there are 10 episodes in the season, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And so after I finish a, a draft, I would give it to my team, um, which, you know, the five, the other four people on the team. So they would review the scripts and then it would also go to the network. There was one executive that would look over all the scripts. Mm -hmm. And I only got one note back from the network. What? Okay. Wow. That's great. Uh, I got a few more notes back from the internal team. And for the first, for the very first script, I did send it out to a few people outside of the circle, mm -hmm. um, some other writers that I know, just to get some feedback. But what I found is that it's a little different to a feature script because a TV series is so complicated. The storylines, I know where they're going to go. My team knows where they're going to go, but somebody outside has no idea. So they can give you some their feedback, but it's not necessarily helpful because they might say, oh, you could do this with the character. And you're like, well, I'm already kind of doing stuff with the character in other episodes. Uh, but the feedback isn't necessarily as helpful as on a completed feature script where you can see the journey and see everything. Because if you only see one piece of the whole storyline, it doesn't, and I don't know, they haven't read the outline, they don't know where it's going. It's helpful in the sense that, oh, I liked it, I'm engaged by it, I want to see what happens. Then you can, then you can say, okay, great, I'm on the right track. Right. If they say it's boring, I don't like it, then yeah, you're going to. Think about yeah, yeah. But if they if, if they're like, oh my god, I want to know what happens, then okay, that's that's really, or mm -hmm. you could ask for really from the audience. So did you shoot all all episodes back to back, or did you take a break in between shows, or how does that work out? Like, well, James can kind of explain that. James, jump in. Um, yeah, we we shot the entire season. Um, back to back there, there were no there were no gaps or anything we shot the whole thing over starting in june and we wrapped in september wow um, so fire season so wow did you take any breaks in between like a day or two here and there or did you literally um, it was five days on two days off yeah. uh, and we did block shooting which means that if you were at one location you uh -huh. might shoot uh, scenes that are in four episodes in one day at uh -huh. that. that was okay. fun so okay, but so for the actors, so the actors had to get the script, all the scripts, or how that, or how that yeah, worked. They got all the scripts at the beginning, and they had to kind of, well, I guess they can talk about their process of tracking their character journey over the. So okay, that's really interesting though to do block shooting, and you're doing multiple, multiple <laughs> episodes. Well, how how did you guys keep track of that? I mean, obviously you have someone to help you with that, but. I mean, in your own mind, I mean, how, how was that experience for you? Hard work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot yeah. of work. You would have long hour days. You would have to prepare for the day that you're working. When you got home, you would have to immediately get to work preparing your next day's stuff so that you can be ready. Um, you can be aware of the context of what you're filming. Uh, you can know what emotional headspace you're in. 
And luckily we were given enough time to mentally prepare in between scenes to get us into the headspace that our character would either otherwise be in episode one in contrast to episode eight or nine. Um, and uh, it was a lot of work. It was mentally demanding, but a, a lot of the people who worked on this project had the, uh, the perseverance and the work ethic to back that up. I know Taylor and Cliff were able to maintain their continuity on their own consistently throughout the shoot, which was very cool because sometimes, uh, you know, it, we're humans, we slip up and luckily we were there for each other, each other to, uh, to keep us on track. Each, each other wow. <laughs> yeah. we were there for each other like nobody else <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a lot of it was, it was hard work i'm sure Ta taylor and cliff i know cliff was that the first time that you had to uh that you shot in that manner oh absolutely i mean uh, first of all the the size of this project for me was uh it was the first time i had ever uh done anything this big and i had 210 pages of uh of dialogue to memorize i had 134 scenes to be in. Um, and I started, I think, the ninth episode. Uh, I think when we, the first scene I was in, I think it was in the ninth episode. Uh, I think in the first week, we were doing scenes from the 10th episode. Uh, at the very end, we were doing the first episode. It was, uh, it was as Ignacio said, very mentally demanding. However, I learned uh, early that uh, the only way I was going to do this was to take one scene at a time and just focus at, on that one scene at a time. And by doing that, I was able to get through it. And that's really what helped me the most, that idea that you take one scene at a time. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I feel that goes for anything. You know, just be in the present moment. And exactly. So that's great. I mean, ta wow. Taylor and I would get on the phone almost, I think, every night after filming to talk about uh, our scenes and the context of the story and the tone. Right, Taylor? Yeah, no, we did. I, I think the thing is when you're shooting out of chronology, right, when you, when you don't have that linear thing to go off of, it's really challenging, but it's, it's nothing so challenging that you just can't work around it. It's just the work. It's just the work that you have to do and you have to feel like you have to do it. Like, like it's not just like, oh, I have this deadline or like, oh, we're filming this scene tomorrow, but it's also like in your blood, in your heart. Like, I just got to do this right. Um, you know, and it's not like, none of this is, I don't think lightning in a bottle. It's all something where if you work hard enough, you can get on top of it. So, so when it came to shooting out of, yeah, there were days where like, there was one day in particular I know it was kind of challenging for me. I think it was episode, we were doing episode uh, four, seven, eight, and like two or something like that. It was like a few all in the span of like 10, 12 hours, really hard. <laughs> but, but you do the work before you even get there. So it's just all you do is you look back down at your notes and you say, okay, I talked to my buddy Ignacio last night about this. We were talking about how in this context, like this is what elevates this scene and, and you find it. And it's cause you have someone who's there to be like, you know, your partner in crime, or you have your family members who help you read your lines before you get there. Or <laughs> they, you know, really, I mean, it's, it's, it's really like the village, the army that it takes to make this work. Uh, it, it doesn't mean anything if you don't do the work on your own before you even get there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, yeah, it was challenging. It was a great challenge. It was, it was an awesome, and I mean the dictionary definition sense, an awesome challenge to have. And I learned so much from it, but it also really just reinforced, I think, what everyone should walk away from these things with, which is just like, oh, it's really all about hard work. It's not lightning in a bottle. It is not like I have a special ability to do this more than anyone else does. Work really hard. Uh -huh. Okay, so hard work, but do you guys also love it? I mean, do yeah, it I mean, feel if, like if, work if or was it? If you didn't love it, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't put yourself into the circumstance of dealing with these strenuous hours with these almost impossible uh, tasks to, to manage. It doesn't feel like work. You know, you set a goal in your head that you want to accomplish and nothing's going to stop you until you accomplish that goal. And, you know, the one thing about the whole shooting out of chronology, that kind of it's, it's a downfall to that is. By the end of the shoot, the one thing a lot of actors that I've met, that I've met ha have in common is that by the end of a shoot, they, they realize they just figured out who this character is, you know, on, on the last day. And shooting out of order 
it has its advantages and disadvantages where you could find like interesting moments in like episode nine that you didn't think of because you didn't get to film episode nine yet, but you did. And so now you can bring whatever that interesting thing you did in episode nine and kind of subtly introduce it in episode three, two, five, whatever it is. But then on the other hand, if you're shooting something very late on, then you might miss uh, a beautiful opportunity to discover something and implement that into the story. And then, because I've had that, I've had moments where I went home and I was like, oh, you know, I did this today. I wish I would have done this on this day when we were shooting this episode. But at the end of the day, only you know that. Only yeah. the actor working knows that. And it, it, it plays to the art of being in this business. And I don't think any of us, all of us are very grateful that we even get to do this for a living. I mean, yeah. we, we get to play pretend with each other, hang out, f- learn new things, uh, be jacks of all trades. Some of us become masters of all trades because of the fact that we're given the beautiful opportunity to step into so many different people's shoes, their point of views, get an understanding get an empathy, f- a better worldview, uh, so to say, of people that live on, on this planet you know so it's beautiful and i don't i think all of us get to get to go to work we don't have to go to work we get to go to work Mm -hmm. have some fun yeah that's that's Mm -hmm. good so okay david so what was it like for you as the director and the writer shooting block scenes like that no would um was it something that i mean if you had a chance to do it again would you or would you prefer to do one Uh, episode at a time or well i think with um the the budget that we have, there was no other way to do it. Okay. And um, for a, a series where you have all ten episodes written, I think most most uh, episodics, well, most um, series do block shoot. It's only on shows that are serial, that are procedurals that um, that do not do that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it just there were challenges. I, I think it, it was like Cliff said it best, take it one scene at a time. And I would even say, take it one shot at a time. Just focus, you just have to focus. And then you have to, you know, I I would basically have to go, okay, what are we shooting right now? And then have to think back, okay, what is the context? Um, What do I remember about where this fits into everything? And then go, okay, now that's what I'm looking for in this scene. It yeah, because some days you're sh- you're literally shooting so many pieces for so many episodes that I really can't think about the others <laughs> while I'm shooting one. I just have to think about that one that I'm shooting. Well, it sounds like it really kept you on your feet, definitely on your toes. Like no no room for complacency. Just make it happen and go go go, right? Oh, you, you we were yeah. There's no room for slacking off if, if that's what you mean. You gotta. <laughs> Um, and it's so easy to miss things because there's so much detail and sometimes you're like, I, I need this prop that I don't have right now. Where's this act background actor or where's, where's this thing that we need? And then we're like, we don't have it. Well, they didn't show up. Well, where are they? So someone would have to figure out where this person is um, because we need them for the scene. And when you start to look at the logistics of it, because we had so many actors. If you just even had one actor missing for a scene, you couldn't do it. Oh, wow. So James was calling up actors the week before, three days before, the day before. You, you're going to be there, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wrangling the actors. Wrangling the oh, Yeah, so uh, just, just a few things that, that I'll throw out in there also for the actors. Um, in terms of su- shooting block schedule, they're 100% correct that it was a ton of work they had to do. But also a lot of talent. Not everyone, I think, can do that over over ten episodes. So it, it was for me. It was pretty cool just to see the talent level uh, of the actors. Like like Cliff said, being able to play, having just met each other in some cases, and play scenes from emotional scenes from episodes nine and ten for the first time. A lot of work went into it, but also a lot of talent. That was a great thing to see. Um, block schedule, also locations. You, we're trying to make the show as authentic as possible. So we shot in real locations all, all around New York City. And if you need a location, episode three and then episode seven, you're shooting all that back to back in that location because you might not have it in a couple of weeks. Um, so that was also part of that. And yeah, making sure all the actors and resources are on board. Um, you can never double check enough times. You have to check many, many times to make sure everyone will be there when you need them. 
Um, I think there was one actor who did in our show. There was one. There was one. Huh. And, but and we, but we had to replace them. We got it taken care of, though. Yeah. So, so we replaced them, yeah, within like a day or something, two days. Wow. Yeah. Their loss. That person's loss. Yeah. Right. See, that's so sad. <laughs> I know. All right, so you're shooting on location in New York, New York City. I mean, it's been a crazy time because of you know this thing that's been going on for two years now. What was that like? I mean, did you find people um, who were willing to be accommodating on, on location sets, or did you find a lot of um, pushback because of um, um, what's been going on? Um, wh what has that been like? Would you say it was more of a challenge or? that just seemed like you got it done. It definitely limited um, our possibilities because a lot of places were just like, sorry, we're not open for filming. Um, there, was, there was a jail detention center that, that said to us, oh, normally we, you know, we have tons of filming in here, but we can't do that right now, sorry. So, <laughs> so you even had all kinds of restrictions <laughs> Yeah, there, there were a lot of places that we just had no access. Uh, so we had to keep looking for places that could work. And wow. yeah, definitely made it much more difficult. But knowing that makes the show to me all the better because the show looks great and you really did an amazing job. So considering you had all those quote restrictions or obstacles I'm, I'm really proud of you guys you did a really yeah. i can't wait to see the next episode yeah so one of I, one of the locations was on city property and they literally had not let anyone shoot in in those places for over a year and something literally they were completely shut down and and we actually scheduled those at the very end of our shoot in the last two weeks hoping that we would actually be able to film there uh, but knowing that there was a possibility that we couldn't because when we first checked, there was like, no way, you're not, you're not getting in here. Mm -hmm. And then and the James managed to, to wrangle that in the last two weeks of our shoot to get that location. And even the city permit office was like, you got somebody, you, how did you get this? <laughs> yeah, that was a tough one. <laughs> Yeah, that was a tough one, but we got it. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so would you say that there were any, I mean, I know New York can have like crazy weather sometimes. Did the weather cooperate for your shoe or was something else you had to work around? Uh, well, one of our shoot days was pushed because of the hurricane. Oh, that's right. Oh, wow. And, and we looked at the weather forecast and we're like, yeah, I think we should postpone this. Um, it says hurricane, so... <laughs> I'm glad we did because that would have been a complete disaster. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if you heard about the hurricane, but it set a record for the most rainfall in an hour or something like four, four inches in one yeah. hour. Oh, wow. Like, like literally the entire city got flooded so bad. The subway stopped running. Whoa. Yeah. That never happens. Wow. And it was just that one day. Yeah, and then we were shooting the next day after the hurricane, and and we're like, oh my god, I hope the, I hope the subways stop running again because people need to get here to shoot for the next day. And I think our day started around five o'clock. So, yeah, and the subway started running again. Most lines were back around three p.m. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, most of our our houses, my house got flooded. Deirdre's entire neighborhood got flooded. Her car got washed away. She didn't have a way to go to work. It was it was really bad. It was it wasn't just the city. A lot of people's uh, personal lives were affected. Yeah, oh and it was just God. off of one rainfall. People drowned in their basements. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't just uh, just because the city was uh, or the subways were flooded. It was because like it was uh, the tri-state area was really messed up. President Biden came actually to the houses, some of the houses in Woodside where people actually drowned in their basements. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize the extent of that. 
but you well, are, were all you guys okay i mean your home safe my my house my house flooded the whole basement okay. was flooded we had water coming out of every orifice every sink in our basement um coming from the drainage and sewage was coming through the the ground through the walls it was really oh. bad so i i had a i was up all night uh for two nights because it happened it was a two night thing the first night was kind of bad then the second night was really bad and you then know? to work the and then you went to work yeah okay no, I, so I, let it too. I spent a week uh, cleaning it up uh, during the filming <laughs> luckily new yorkers new yorkers band together so a lot of people offered to help you know you, i had people with hvac systems saying like hey we'll come by right now and we'll help you take care of it but uh you know that's the beauty of new york everybody bands together Oh, that's beautiful. And see, I, I, I never heard about that. I mean, I, I, did, so it's nice to hear that, you know, you've been personally affected and that you, you know, people do come together. That's really beautiful to hear. And then yet mm -hmm. still you guys went to work and you've committed. Yeah. To life, of, life goes on. Right. <clears throat> the, one thing, the one thing you learn is life goes on. You got to keep moving. No one's going to stop and wait for you, you know? So you gotta, you gotta catch up no matter what. Wow. Well, that says a lot about how talented you guys are for, you know, committing to your, to your work. You know, I mean, some people I know, you know, they would experience something like that. They would like take time off from work to take care of whatever they have to take care of. So, you know, um, you, you guys, you know, A plus, you guys are truly professional actors. That's, that's, David, you're very, really lucky. Oh, yeah. Like that's that. true. yeah, they were showed up ready to work. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jimmy, the DP, <laughs> the DP's uh, basement flooded as well, and um, he wasn't he, he didn't have time to clean that up until we wrapped. <laughs> wow! Because you know he was so busy, but um, yeah, all, yeah, all these guys are troopers. Really, really, you know, we I expected a lot from these guys, and they they delivered. That's exciting. All right. So is there anything you wish you could have done differently having now having all episodes under your belt? Um, well, there's plenty of things I would do differently. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, for sure. Uh, for sure. And uh, one of those would be, you know, trying to get uh, more resources, a better, bigger budget, um, get more crew, get, you know. Time, time, time. I think time. You know, it's the one thing you can't get back in life. And that's the one thing we needed. Sometimes we needed time and just t time isn't a favor to you. You have to adapt to the, to the lack of time. And that's what we did. We fought our hardest to do what we could under the time constraints that we had. And I think everybody played an integral part in that. And without every individual person that participated in this production, we wouldn't have been able to get it done at the quality that we did. We wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. so, so that's a testament to everybody, not just the per performers. That's the production, the people behind the scenes, our, our camera people, our lighting team, our hair and makeup, our wardrobe, everybody that that was a part of it, you know? Wow. Well, you all become a unit to get this done. You do. And I, I think that's one thing that's so exciting about filmmaking, whether it's you know for the film or TV, where you bring all these people together and it's not just one person, it's the whole team. And I, I think people don't really realize that. So even though it starts with an idea, David, you had this idea and you brought it to life, you really um, created like this whole world that so many people can be part of. And I think that's so exciting. Um, okay, so are we gonna be looking at a season two? Hopefully. Um, <laughs> I mean, the network is very, very impressed with everything. Um, they're, they're super happy with with what they've seen so far and and i think part of it just is what's the audience response going to be um it, it seems really positive so far so um yeah um if people tune in if yeah. i if i could say I, we did have so much interest to stream the premiere that it literally crashed the server i've never in my life experienced something like that it was so monumental the amount of people that wanted to be involved in this and watch this and like take part in it like uh, on cable it was like perfect mwah, you know chef's kiss but i it was amazing to see the demand and the interest people who really wanted to take part in the first episode so hopefully if that's any indication 
you know, we've found something really good here. Hopefully that's, um, hopefully that's the kind of thing that keeps people coming back for more. If it means anything, my mom loves it. So. Oh. <laughs> mom, right, um, so mom's, yeah. mom's the best. To. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So David, where can people see your show? And how? Uh, you can see it on ntd.com. Um, hopefully they've fixed the streaming now that they've promised that they've sorted out those technical issues that they, they, they spent all week trying to troubleshoot and stress testing and um, so that should be sorted out. NTD.com, you can just click live TV at 7.30 p.m. And it does air 7.30 Eastern time, but also air 7.30 Western time, Western. Um, uh, or you can click on how to watch, uh, which takes you to all the different channels that it's on, which is on cable, it's on Fios, it's on Spectrum, it's on free to air in 36 cities around the country. That's great. And it will also be, it, the first episode is currently available streaming on ntd.com. You could just look for a good cop on the website, NTD, and then you'll find it. Uh, but it will also come out on Epoch TV in uh, next week. That's very exciting. Streaming. So uh, you can watch the first episode on ntd.com. And that's and, free, right? Yeah, yeah, it's free. Um, as for... What they're going to do with feature episodes, I'm not sure, because that was a last minute change in the last two days. They decided to put it on available so that people who had problems with the stream last week could watch it. Oh, good. So so now people can go anytime to watch it, the first episode. Yeah. Yes, correct. Okay. I'm, not then, sure, I'm not sure if they plan to do that for the second episode, but at least the first one is available. OK. Very exciting. Well, congratulations. Gosh, an hour has gone by so fast. Oh my God. Yeah, you guys are so awesome. And I'm just so glad that you're able to you know, share this time with me. I'm really proud of what you've done. You know, I know there are so many different circumstances. I, I wasn't aware to the extent of the hurricane. So I just have all that much more respect for you guys for just really you know, committing to the project and getting done such you know a beautiful piece. It's intelligent and well acted and the story writing is really great, and I'm just um, oh, and I have to say the music is really good. The composer, very Armand, bravo, love the music. Love it. His birthday, I think, yesterday. Yes, his birthday. Happy was birthday, that. Armand! Incredible, so, so talented. Yeah. Oh, I love him. So all around, I really hope to see a second season. Um, thank you guys for sharing your time. Does I'm you know, anyone want to throw anything out there about the show just to you know share a little bit more? Or? Love to. May I? Because yes. I would love to. I was going to say, and I think Cliff touched on it a little earlier, whether you love police or hate police, I think that you'll like the show. I think one of the incredible things about the show is that it really wants to start a conversation. It wants to do what Ignacio was saying, which is bridge this gap this b between these polarities, right? And, and I think when you watch the show, and when I was involved in the show, I felt this as well, some of your beliefs are reinforced and some are challenged. And I think that if you want to watch something that encourages you to have a conversation with yourselves about what policing looks like right now, the system that it operates within, and the humanity of each individual who participates in that system, this is a great show just from the point, the point of view from someone who believes in like, okay, we can, we can find systems that work for people and we, can, we have to find a way to do it that makes everyone feel safe and equitable, et cetera. This is a great show to engage with where if you want to have those conversations with yourself or someone who feels really far away from what you believe, great place to start. Uh, I, I think it's, it's awesome in that it has that, that mission. And, I, and I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that and how responsible I think that is. Yeah. That's beautiful. And well, you're right. We need to have discussions. We need to be able to you know, have a dialogue about what's going on and not just with the police, but with so many other things and not be afraid to talk about it without yeah. shutting someone else off and really listen. And I think the show really does that. And I, mm -hmm. I'm really proud of you guys, you know, as actors, the commitment you put into it, the talent, you know, I didn't realize you're you know, doing four, you know, four different shows at the same time, you know, this whole block thing is like, completely new to me. And as an actor, what a great challenge, but you've, I can only imagine how much you've learned by doing that, you know, within your own, um, your own, your own tools. So I, I think Bravo, um, that that's a lot. So um, gosh, I really, I want to see, 
I haven't even seen the full season yet. I want to see, you know, season two, you know, so I hope, I hope great things happen for all of you. You're all, you know, beautiful people. And um, David, and I'm very, very proud of you. And I'm so glad that you're doing this. And I, I want to see great things happen. Yeah, for you I and, and you so, um, so thank you very much. For, I'm going to put your links on my, um, on my show. So they can check out your IMBD pages as well. And um, I look forward to seeing the episode today. So thank you. Enjoy. So thank yeah, you. please. All right. Well, David, James, it's a, James, you are a producer, right, on the show? Yes. All right. So now that the show is pretty much wrapped, what happens next for you? Um, um, promote it. We're out there promoting yeah. it. <laughs> it's going to be out there. Uh, tonight is episode two, and we're going to episode 10. And then it'll be, like David said, it'll be streaming on Epoch on the 19th. So just try and get as many viewers as possible. Okay, great. Yeah, for, for a series, it's not really like a film where you have one date. Uh, these things can build and word of mouth can get more and more traction as it gets out there more. So um, yeah, promotion for us is going to take months. Okay, well, all right. Well, I'm, I'm so glad to have you on my show. And I, I'd love to do this again when we're, you know, say may, maybe midway through the season and, you know, talk more about it because I would love to talk about what's going on in, this, in the series. You know, and I don't want you guys have to give anything away, but um, maybe we could definitely do this again if that's okay with you guys. Thanks for having us. Oh, Thank that's you. Cute. All right, cool. Well, you guys, I, I want to see great things happen for all of you. So happy holidays. And I look forward to talking with you guys again soon. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you.